to your feet and let's praise our God together. Come on, let's clap our hands up high right there. Come on, catch it there. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this backbones. And I've tried with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. Stolen 
your breath and sang my own song. And Lord, I confess that I'm far from innocent. These shackles I wear, oh, I bought on my own. Sing this with me, Scarlet Sins. Scarlet Sins at a crimson cross. You nailed my debt to that old rugged cross. An empty slate at the empty. Come on, thank God that stone was rolled away. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I confess. Declare this with me. Then Jesus came and tore down my prison walls. Death came to life when he called me by name. Scarlet sins had a crimson cross.
Come on, church. Let's give him praise this morning. Come on. He's the chain breaker. He's the way maker. He is great and greatly to be praised. Come on. In the nine o'clock service today, we have people that said yes to Jesus. We have people that were set free from their addictions. So let's give him praise today. Yes, Jesus, we praise you. You're great and greatly to be praised, God. All the earth will shout your praise. Jesus, you are welcome in this place today. Amen. Before you guys sit down, please say hello to someone around you. Well, good morning. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Brandon. I'm on staff here. And uh, on behalf of Pastor Paul um, and our entire staff, we just want to say a special welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Man, is it not awesome to be able to wear a t-shirt again? Yes, thank you, Jesus. If you're a first time guest, we want to say a very special welcome. And we actually have a gift for you. We have a free t-shirt. And it is so awesome to be in this community and see uh, people wearing Rivers Crossing uh, t-shirts all over the place. And so if you're a first time guest, go out to the welcome desk, get your free t-shirt and uh, I think you'll like it. Uh, hey, if you are not following us on social media, uh, please do so. We're on Facebook, Instagram. It's a great way for uh, us to connect together and, uh, and you to kind of keep up with uh, what's going on here around the church. So you can download our app um, on uh, any app store, please do that as well. Uh, the app is a great resource, it's a great tool uh, to find out um, just what's going on around the church. You can listen to past sermons. Uh, it's just a great resource, a great tool for you. One of our core values here at Rivers Crossing is love and community. And, uh, you know, we say a lot around here that we want you to get out of rows and into circles, to get into groups. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way to make uh, a large church feels small again. Um, and you can do that in a bunch of ways. You can join a team. Uh, you can, you know, like our, our hosting team, uh, people who are out there serving coffee and beverages, our, our kids teams. Uh, so you can join a team, you can join a community group, and you can also uh, be a part of the many events that we have around here. Um, you know, last weekend, uh, we had a group of people partner with Hands Against Hunger, and they packed over 50,000 meals together. Um, next Sunday night, by the way, we have a women's ministry here that is dynamic, it's vibrant, and it, it, they're, they're killing it. And many of you know that. And next weekend, uh, I think it's the 13th, uh, we have um, an event uh, with Beth Guckenberger here. This place is gonna be packed, it's gonna be awesome. And uh, you know, in like next month, we have a, a big men's event coming. So there are lots of ways for you to get plugged in. And on the app, there's actually a tab that says events. and Go hit that events tab and it'll tell you everything that's going on here at the church. Well, today we're continuing Buried Alive, our series on finding hope for your mental health. And Pastor Paul and Dr. Brett Dowdy uh, have just given us so much wisdom on these topics over the last couple weeks. And I am super excited to hear what they have to say today. What's up, Rivers Crossing? How you guys doing? Come on, 1045, are you guys awake today? There we go. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Paul. I'm the lead pastor here, honored to have you in the house. Uh, most of you know, if you're a regular attender, that it's not just here in Mason. We have a campus in Deer Park, and we have an online family who's been watching this series and many others from all over the world. So let's welcome Deer Park, welcome our online family. Thank them for being with us today. 
If you are a guest and it's your first time, we are in the middle of a series called Buried Alive, Finding Hope for Your Mental Health. I'm going to get to that in just a moment. But if you're a regular attender or you happen to be a first-time guest last week, we opened our service by praying for the war in Ukraine, what's happening uh, on the other side of this planet called Earth. There is atrocity happening. There's civilian loss of life. There are now the estimates uh, that just came in this morning that I checked, 1.2 million refugees, uh, the the largest humanitarian crisis and fleeing in in a two-week period in the history of our planet. And uh, can we keep praying? Okay, and there is power in prayer. There, there is power in prayer. Some of you, you're gonna be radically changed by the power of a prayer today. Like I'm talking radically changed. In a moment, your life, the, the trajectory of your life changed forever, not just for eternity, but, but for the here and now. We believe that, we believe there's power in prayer, but sometimes, can we be honest, sometimes it's easier just to say, well, I'll pray for that than to do anything. Okay, it's kind of quiet in here. And let's be honest, how many of you just said, I'm praying for you, rather than actually meeting a physical need, rather than going to help, rather than being at the bedside, rather than giving someone the shirt off your back. I mean, it's so much easier. And Jesus said that we would be known by the things that we do as his followers. So we're gonna do something, we're gonna keep praying, but thanks to our partnership with Church Planters, we have an initiative called 10 and 10, uh, and that's to plant 10 churches in 10 years. And one of those churches happens to be in Europe, in Lentz, the home, the birth town of Hitler in Austria. And the gospel is going forth through Pastor Ray and Summer Chaser there. We support them directly. Ray and his father have had a long-term ministry in Romania right on the border of the Ukraine. And they are taking a team directly, like directly to the edge of the country to minister practically to the needs of people as they are coming out. And I'm so excited we shared that with the rest of our churches in our 10 and 10 and everyone jumped on board. And this past week and today, they're all gonna be taking up an offering that you, because of your generosity, we as Rivers Crossing Community Church are gonna match every single dollar that comes in from all of our 10 and 10 partners to send directly into the field to the Ukraine to minister to people who are hurting and broken in the middle of a war-torn country. So I already know that the ones that have come in and it's only three churches, uh, it's already $40,000 and I am trusting God that's gonna be 100 that we have to match. So uh, we're gonna be sending a lot of money. So thank you, thank you, thank you. For those of you who partner with us, thank you for your generosity. It's not just about what happens inside these walls, it's about what's happening all over the world. So you're giving, you're not just giving to, you're giving through. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't think there's, there's a topic that evokes the emotion of our trailer for this series more than the topic of addiction. There's not, not a feeling that, that some of you can experience that's heavier or, or truly like being buried alive, like wrestling with some type of addiction. And the numbers are staggering. The, the latest data on drug overdoses in the United States of America that, that came in, they're measured annually, and the last data that we have from the CDC came in last April, April of 21. Think about April of 20. Remember what happened in March of 20? April of 20 to April of 21, there were over 100,000 deaths in this country by overdose. 100,300, can we throw that stat up? I think it's 306. And what's even more staggering is for the previous year, it jumped over 28%. From one year, the largest jump in the history of measuring overdoses. And to think that what's happening in our world is not impacting our mental health, it is. And there are some of you who are wrestling with addiction. Some of you have lost someone that you love and care for deeply to an overdose. And if that's you, our hearts break for you. They break with you. And and today might be a a really hard day for you, but there is hope in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And for everyone else who is already tuning me out because you think I'm talking about those 100,306 people, 
I wanna talk about addiction and, and redefine it just a little bit because it's so much broader than what some of you think of and you're already thinking this message isn't for me. So let's broadly define addiction as this. The continued and compulsive consumption of a substance or behavior, notice, substance or behavior, despite its harm to self and or others. So pause for a moment and think to yourself, am I addicted to anything or to any behavior? Now, some of you have a real, real difficult time at being honest with yourself. So I'm gonna give you a few more clarifying things. <laughs> Because some of you are already thinking about, yep, and you're elbowing your spouse or your son or your daughter or your friend maybe who brought you and you're not thinking about yourself. So let's, let's walk through signs of addiction. You may have an addiction if, number one, you have a loss of control over the behavior. Mm-hmm, uh-oh, uh-oh's right. Number two, there's persistence or having real difficulty limiting the behavior. Justification, tolerance, so let's do tolerance first. Tolerance, the need to engage in the behavior more often to get the same feeling. Justification, convincing others that your behavior is appropriate. Severe negative consequences stemming from the behavior. Withdrawal or feelings of irritability and anxiety when the cell phone is not in your hand. Oh, that's, oh, I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> when the behavior isn't practiced. Relapse or picking up the habit again after periods of avoidance. Some of you, you're still in denial, so I'm gonna go through a list. I'm gonna start with the one that Christians really struggle talking about openly and in church. And some of you are going sex. Now I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. Food. Yeah. Study after study after study has been done with the, the power, the chemical power of sugar. Now I'm, I'm not gonna overinflate this because I think there's been some data that's been shared that, that you probably have read over the last 10 years that sugar is more powerful than cocaine in the in the study of rats, if you've never heard that, there are some studies that would, would suggest that. Uh, but food, you can be addicted to food. Pornography. Sex. Yes, we said it in church. And if you are under the age of 13, ask your parents what that is on the way home today. <laughs> <laughs> the obvious drugs, both prescription and illegal, alcohol, video games, your phone. Now, I, I want to clarify that. A ton of research on what happens in the brain with those little hearts that you either click or that you see. There is a literal addiction happening in your brain. But some of you are like, well, I'm not on social media. You're checking the balance of the stock market every five minutes and you can't stop, even at work. You got a ticker and you can't stop looking at it. Some of you, you are so obsessed with crypto that it is dominating your life. So you're like, what's crypto? It's 2022, guys, if I have to tell you what crypto is. <laughs> Um, then I'll throw out two more, and these are the ones where you're going to go, ah, caffeine, nicotine. Now, can we start the message over with some honesty? I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but how many of you are struggling with some type of addiction. Now, I'm not even getting into the behavior of approval, needing approval. I'm not even getting into the nuances of swiping right for another hookup. 
And, and just to level the playing field, I've been addicted to everything that I just shared with you except for swiping right and gambling, every other thing I just shared with you. If you don't know my story, uh, I'm not the, the altar boy. I was in the choir. <laughs> but I share my story a lot around here because I, I want you to understand that, that I did not become a follower of Jesus until I was 21. I share that story in detail in Growth Track. If you go to our website under Next Steps, uh, you can go through Growth Track digitally, and week one is my personal testimony. Just for a little bit of context, I was too scared of my mom <laughs> to do anything until I was 14, but the first time I did anything, I drank a Bartles and James wine cooler like real men did in the 80s. <laughs> if you want some, I mean, we can meet up. Followed by a beer, followed by my first joint in the first night. And this is for this audience. I didn't share this in the first hour. I've done a lot of research and I have a lot of personal experience. But there, some people have said, and you may have heard, I have an addictive personality. And there, the data says that there are certain personalities. If you have less inhibition and you are more reckless, if you're the guy who, who as a kid, they said, I bet you won't climb up that tree and jump off. And you immediately like, yes, I will. <laughs> You do tend to, again, I'm not speaking anything over you today that God doesn't want to deliver you from, <laughs> but sometimes you can have a tendency to develop addictions faster than other people. So again, um, I met Jesus Christ three weeks before I turned 21 years old and he changed my life life. He set me free. He delivered me and transformed me. And I want to be really, really clear today. We still believe that the power of Jesus can change your life in an instant. Like Jesus set me free. Like, like I didn't drink anymore after drinking 38 beers the night before I became a follower of Jesus. Like I was just delivered. I was set free. DUIs, arrests, public urination, public intoxication. This is not like a, like a, a bragging fest of my past because I'm embarrassed and I'm ashamed of it in my flesh. But I just want to like, hey, you're in a safe place. If you're as jacked up as me, you're in a safe place. You're in the house of God where the grace of God flows and can meet you in the middle of your addiction. That's what Jesus Christ can do. Anna Lemke is a professor of psychiatry and addiction medicine at Stanford University. She says this, we've transformed the world from a place of scarcity to a place of overwhelming abundance, drugs, food, news, gambling, shopping, gaming, texting, sexting, Facebooking, Instagramming, YouTubing, tweeting. The increased numbers, variety, and potency of highly rewarding stimuli today is staggering. The smartphone is the modern day hypodermic needle delivering digital dopamine 24 seven for a wired generation. If you haven't met your drug of choice yet, it's coming soon to a website near you. Her book that came out last summer called Dopamine Nation. I love the subtitle for those of you who know, Finding Balance in the Age of Indulgence. Uh, she goes through her 20 plus years of practicing uh, being a, a psychologist and, and then bring scientific evidence-based data to what we are wrestling with as a culture. And she talks a lot about dopamine, which is a, a neurotransmitter that's released in our bodies to, to reward us and to bring us pleasure in life. It's this miraculous little thing that God made and it connects two neurons together and it releases pleasure and reward in our brains and to our body. Every single one of us, and Dr. Dowdy will talk about this a little more in detail about the specific levels of dopamine in your body, but every single one of us has what a a, a clinical expert would call a tonic level, a baseline level of dopamine in your body at all times. What happens when you click again on that pornographic website? What happens when you smoke that joint, take that drug? What happens when you put yourself out there and you're dying for that hit or that like teenagers or adults is you get a little dopamine hit. And certain drugs will release 
large amounts of dopamine into your body, some of those on the very first time that you ever do those drugs, and they will over time change your base tonic level of dopamine in your life where that next hit doesn't quite get you back. It doesn't push you above, and that's what happens. That's what addiction is, and, and, and I need you to hear this. You're not gonna hear me call this an illness in this talk. I wanna be really, really careful here. And I'm bringing an expert to the table. I'm preaching to you today and telling you what God's word says. Addiction becomes an illness because it, the brain is rewired after your choice and repeated choice to engage in a sinful pattern that destroys you and rewires your brain. It becomes a disease, but it was first a choice. Now, the amazing thing about God's word is it backs up neuroplasticity. You have the power with God's power to retrain your brain, to reprogram your brain and make your brain different than the patterns you've been establishing for weeks, decades, months, and some of you for, for your entire life. Like your addiction started as a, as, as a child, unfortunately. Romans 12, two, I, I memorized in the NIV, it says, don't be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You can change your brain, neuroplasticity. It's backed up in the Bible. I love the message translation of Romans 12 too. It says, don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. So what I'm gonna do in the rest of my time, we're gonna go fast and we're gonna fill in some blanks, is I'm gonna give you four critical things to understand about addiction if you want to find freedom. And as our Celebrate Recovery friends say so often around here, from your hurts, habits, and hangups. Shout out CR. There we go. I usually just have to have C and they start screaming. <laughs> but number one, and this is so important that you understand this, you are not your addiction. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ in this room, you are not your addiction, you're not. It may, be, it may be defining you, it may be influencing you, you may be controlled by it right now, but that's not who you are. I love 12-step programs. Alcoholics Anonymous was created by a follower of Jesus Christ. He wanted it to be broader, so he never specifically mentioned Jesus in a 12-step program. Amazing. We, Celebrate Recovery is a 12-step program and a program works. Sometimes you're set free from an addiction in a moment, in a time of prayer, in surrendering God, in worship, and you never go back to it. That is awesome, but more often than not, it takes a program and a community to find freedom in the long haul. What I don't like, though, about certain 12-step programs is they start out, and you've probably seen this, and you're like, man, I've never dealt with addiction. No one in my family, you probably have watched some television show that shows someone going to a AA meeting and they stand up or they say in a circle, hi, I'm Paul and I am an alcoholic or addicted to heroin or addicted to pornography or addicted to food or I have a sex addiction. And they just, they go through whatever it is, you fill in the blank and that's, that's what they say right out of the gate. My problem with that is they are repeated and most people in a 12 step program are either going multiple times a week or at least once a week. Some people have been walking the 12 steps for 20, 30, 40 years. And the problem with that is you are saying repeatedly over and over and over again, I am my addiction. You are not your addiction. Yes. You are not your addiction. And, and what I love about CR is it talks about who we are in Christ and celebrate recovery when you introduce yourself, you say, hi, I'm Paul. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ and I struggle with fill in the blank. We have done so many series about identity. We talk about it all the time around here. If you wanna go back to our website, if you're online and you download our app, you, you can find a series called Identity Theft that talks all about identity. It is so important. We'll probably put this in our reference page for Buried Alive. Anytime I talk about identity, I point people to a multiple page document, multiple page document that I developed called 
my identity in Christ according to the scriptures. That's who you are. I'm just gonna share with you one text and somebody needs to hear this today. This is 1 John chapter three, verse one. How great is the lover, love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And this is my favorite part. And that is who we are. We're children of God. We're not our addiction. If you know Jesus Christ in this room, you are not your addiction. Number two, this is what you need to know about addiction. You can overcome your addiction. You can. I'm not saying you will, but I'm saying you can. It is possible. There is so much data that shows that even the worst case scenario, you're addicted to fentanyl or heroin, some of the strongest opiates, synthetic, natural, like, like over, like coming at it, it's, it seems impossible. And maybe you've relapsed, maybe you've gone back, but there is power in Jesus Christ to be set free. We just believe that. And, and as I said, like, man, the dream is we pray, you come up after the service, we pray over you, we lay hands on you, whether it's the world, the flesh, or the devil, we deal with it and you never go back to it. That happens sometimes, it does. But more often than not, you've gotta change your mindset and believe that you can, over the long haul, walk and live in freedom. And you have to believe what the scriptures say. And one of my favorite scriptures talks about temptation and what we do with it. It's found in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation. Now, when, and I just wanna be clear, in the Greek, this is all inclusive. This means your temptation. This means, well, God couldn't have possibly meant that. He means every possible temptation that you face. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. Somebody else is going through it. And God is faithful. He would not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Now, he'll provide the way out He's not removing your free will and your capacity to choose whether or not you're gonna take it. But if you are a follower of Christ in here, there is always a way out. God will provide it every single time. And it's usually before you get to the bar. It's usually before you score the hit. It's usually before you get on the phone or the internet. It's usually before you need more approval. It's, it's before you even open the app. It's the opportunity to escape is always gonna be provided and, and you can be set free. It's possible. It's possible. I want to share with you one more scripture. First John, again, chapter five, verse four and five. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. We've talked about this in this series. Some of you, your, your struggle with mental health, there has been a genetic proclivity because of the fall for you and your family tree to perhaps struggle with a certain type of mental health issue or addiction more than someone else. Okay, you were born into this world with perhaps the deck stacked against you. However, you also can be born again. You, you have an earthly birth that you had no control over. You have a spiritual birth. Jesus said this in John chapter three. If you want to enter, if you want to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. If you are born again, this is who this is talking to. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. Everyone. Born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Th there is freedom. There is an opportunity today to, to, to have your life transformed. It starts with that belief. Third thing I want you to know about addiction, you have to move from a victim mindset to a victor mindset. Yes. Now, again, I, I wanna be really careful here because I don't want anyone walking out of here with shame. It's so important like that you come back next week because we're talking specifically about shame. I've had conversations with people in my 26 plus years of ministry that you cannot imagine the horror and the trauma that were committed against innocent children. There are people who've wrestled with addiction because their dad thought it would be cool to have a beer with their eight-year-old to make them a man. Real story. 
There are people who've had sexual acts committed against them that, that wired their brain in a certain way where they began to act out on those things at an age before they were even supposed to be sexually active. Right. And, and I'm not minimizing the horror of those types of traumatic experiences that can lead to addiction. But Dr. Lemke in, in her book, uh, Dopamine Nation, talks in her experience about the power of redefining your story, even if your addiction started because of a traumatic event. Because for some of you, the addiction started because you just thought you were gonna have fun. For some of you, it started not from a traumatic event, but some other type of suffering in your life and trying to deal with that pain and that suffering, you turned to addiction, whether that was because of depression or anxiety, like we've already been talking about, or trauma. She says this, it's not gonna be on the screen, but I wanna read it because I think it's really, really important that you move from a victim mindset to a victor mindset. In more than 20 years as a psychiatrist, listening to tens of thousands of patient stories, I have become convinced that the way we tell our personal stories is a marker and predictor of mental health. Patients who tell stories in which they are frequently the victim, seldom bearing responsibility for bad outcomes, are often unwell and remain unwell. They are too busy blaming others to get down to the business of their own recovery. By contrast, when my patients start telling stories that accurately portray their responsibility, I know they're getting better. You gotta own it. You gotta own it if you're ever gonna get better. And, and this again, how do you move to a victor mindset? How do you become victorious? You believe what the word of God says about you. Romans chapter eight, verse 37. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You, if you are in Christ, are more than a conqueror because of the love of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, he was thinking about you, loving you in the middle of your mess. He knew what you would do. He knew what you had done. He knew what you would, would do. And he took upon himself your addiction. He, he took it upon himself, your pain, your trauma, your impure thoughts, your need for approval, your food addiction, your sex addiction, your porn addiction, your drug addiction, whatever it is, Jesus died for that because he loved you, because he loved you, because he loved you, and guess what? He still loves you, and he loves you, and he makes you more than a conqueror through that love. It's the only way to ever find lasting peace and lasting freedom. Finally, uh, I'm gonna cheat, is that okay? I told you four points, but I actually put three points in number four. <laughs> and it's all about the truth. If you ever want to find freedom from your addiction, you have to face the truth. Waiting for it to come up on the screen. Tell the truth and receive the truth to find freedom. Now, some of you are like, well, I, I never told a lie in my life. You know, uh, the data says, now, can we all agree that a white lie is a lie? It's telling that person that you like their outfit when you really don't. In God's economy, that's a lie, right? The average person, so we're just, again, trying to be average in here, we're ordinary people seeking extraordinary lives. To find the extraordinary, you gotta be honest. You gotta tell the truth. The average person tells 0.5 to 1.5 lies in my lifetime. <laughs> Every single day, according to the data. So the first thing you gotta do is tell the truth. Yeah. Tell the truth. Be honest with God, he already knows. And then you gotta face it. Whatever pain you've created in someone else's life, you gotta, you gotta face it. Whatever addiction you have that's caused you to steal, lie, manipulate, hurt people, break up marriages, break up families, destroy yourself, you gotta face it. And then, ultimately, to find freedom, you gotta receive the truth. Jesus Christ said in a very famous passage of scripture they're gonna share with you, to a group of people who they had believed in him to a certain extent. 
They believe what he was doing was powerful and supernatural. And the, the text shows that they didn't have saving faith. They just acknowledge, oh, he might be God. Oh, he's a wonder working healer. Oh, he's a miracle man. Oh, he's a prophet. They, they had a certain level of faith. This is so critical. Please listen to me. Listen to me. Even the demons know that Jesus Christ is the son of God and they tremble. It's not enough to just have some type of faith. You have to have saving faith. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Again, he's talking to religious people. He's talking to people who were the Jewish people, which is ironic because the next thing that comes out of their mouth is a lie. And see, sometimes the, the people who struggle the most are religious people. Because so often in church, we can't be honest about these types of things. Or maybe you were honest at some point and you got hurt. Well, welcome to Rivers Crossing, where you can be as jacked up as the guy in the pulpit, and we're gonna love you right where you're at, okay? And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But we are descendants of Abraham, they said. We have never been slaves to anyone. (laughs) Have you read the Bible, do you know the history of the Jewish people? Denial. What do you mean? You will be set free. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son is part of the family forever. And see, freedom is found in Christ. Truth is found in Christ. And the reason I said, you gotta face it, tell it, and receive it, is Jesus said this in John 14, verse six. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that's where it's gotta start. It's gotta start with a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now we're gonna talk about some really practical things that I think can help so many of you and maybe people that you love because we have an expert in the house. He's back for the third week in a row, Dr. Brett Dowdy. So let's welcome him to the stage. And as Brett comes out, if you have not been here, uh, you may not know that he is at the Linder Center of Hope here in Cincinnati, uh, which is a very well-known, well-respected. Uh... Hey, Brett. Hey. Sorry to throw my water all over you. Like two to three miles from here, and he is the uh, chief patient experience officer as well, the chief of psychiatric services there. And Brett, I think this topic uh, is confusing for a lot of people. They've heard a lot about addiction. Um, and maybe there's some conflicting messages about addiction. So can you kind of just help us unpack uh, what happens in, in someone who's battling addiction? Yeah, I'm gonna share a couple ideas and they're identical to what Paul just said. Uh, so maybe that means we need to hear them again. Um, I'm gonna really talk about addiction as a brain problem and really a problem of emotional pain. And what do we do and how do we cope with emotional pain? I wanna tell you about a resource. Um, It's uh, Dr. Kevin McCulley did a movie called Pleasure Unwoven. And he, if you've been in rehab, you've probably seen it. Okay. Um, But it's a really good movie and it really unpacks the biology behind addiction. Um, And he found that uh, opioids actually activated him. And as many of us know, if if you take an opioid and you actually get energy from it, then you're more likely to get addicted. Uh, Similar to where if it takes more alcohol for you to get intoxicated, you're more likely to become an alcoholic. And he really really unpacks, tells a lot about the neurobiology. I just think it could be a good resource for families who are kind of wanting to better understand it. So let's talk a little bit more about brain biology and um, really why dopamine can be so problematic. So this is a really helpful, God-given part of our brains, but it can really work against us in addiction. So if you, um, just on a normal day, uh, I wake up, I have about 50 uh, nanograms of dopamine, helps me to kind of get going. On a really bad day, my dopamine will drop to about 40 nanograms. But on a, my best day, the, the day that I win the lottery and can quit work and become a professional potter, I only have about a, 
100 nanograms of dopamine. So my range really is 40 to 100. That's kind of the, what we expect. And unfortunately, when I take a drug like uh, methamphetamine, my dopamine skyrockets to about 1,100 nanograms. So wow. I'm getting about 10 times the amount of dopamine. And when I do that, it actually permanently, or not permanently, but significantly alters my brain. I can recover from it, praise God, but it takes time. Yeah. What we know is that alcohol, cannabis, heroin do this, a similar thing. They get our dopamine into the high hundreds. And so dopamine is powerful, uh, but it can, it can make a life difficult. And it makes life difficult because it, it, the, my child's birthday party um, uh, can become really unpleasant, blasé. Um, it doesn't mean much to me because my brain is used to and accustomed to really high levels of dopamine. And Paul listed a good number of addictions this morning, and they all do similar things to our dopamine. And so... The, um, what we got to do is work on getting to a better balance with, with our brains. Simultaneously to this really do big dopamine problem, I also can see deficits in my attention, planning, problem solving, weighing consequences, and having insight into myself. So for those of us who have seen people with drug and alcohol issues, we've seen this pretty significant personality change. Um, and the, the reason is, is because the, the drugs are impairing my judgment and my yeah. ability to, to really make sense of my world. Um, brain scans are showing that um, the, the craving for drugs far exceeds the craving for food for a starving person. And so when I'm off the drugs, I'm actually in a really desperate situation. And this is why we have compassion for a starving person who steals uh, but we can become appalled by uh, uh, someone who's struggling with drug dependence who steals from grandma. But the reality is their brain is in a severe survival response. And the part of their brain that activates values and beliefs just isn't functioning. And uh, drugs, alcohol, pornography, all of these addictive things really do alter our brain. Yeah, one of the things that I, I found fascinating in studying for this is that, that telling the truth, which is why I snuck those three points into one, um, about basic things. When someone asks you, um, hey, Brett, do you like my shoes? Excellent. They're really nice. Okay. Um, when you don't really like them, but your natural tendency is to say, no, I love those. When you just basic things, just tell the truth, it adjusts the dopamine levels in your brain. Just, just from basic facing the truth and telling the truth, it can literally give you that, that tonic baseline level of dopamine. Uh, speaking of the, the brain, obviously it's fearfully and wonderfully made and very, very delicate. What are some other things when, when wrestling with, as the CR family calls it, hurts habits and hangups uh, beyond that, that, that we need to understand about addiction? Yeah, well, Paul mentioned a couple weeks ago when we looked at trauma, uh, Bessel van der Kolk, who wrote The Body Keeps the Score. He says that it's almost impossible to, be, to have an addiction unless you have a trauma history. And so what we know is that the more adverse childhood experiences you have, the greater likelihood that you're gonna struggle with um, addictive behaviors. So trauma impacts our brain in a way that makes it vulnerable and it makes it vulnerable to having an addiction or to struggling. And we know that psychological pain is a problem that we have to address. Um, all of us are struggling or many of us with things that are compulsive or reoccurring in our life. So whether it's that list that you gave, it's spending, you know, it's money, it's sex, it's love addiction, uh, pornography, power, work, drugs, right. alcohol, all of it um, creates pain in our life. And uh, for some of us, we've, we know that we have a problem and yet we continue to struggle. It's, a, it's still manifesting in our life. And so we have to be curious, what is it about this thing that's got a hold of me? Yeah. And right. why is it so difficult to let go of? I think, and I don't like making assumptions, but I think a lot of people here in our audience are watching this have probably seen something like My Strange Addiction. <laughs> and it goes to those, those very odd, you know, minuscule percentage things that people wrestle with. And then we think, well, I'm not really addicted. And um, what I want to, to help people understand is they may be addicted to something. And if they've realized today 
uh, that they are, what are some steps that they can take to find freedom? Yeah, this is going to sound similar to Paul's message in that we really have to step into the pain. Um, when most of us as humans, when, we, when there's the potential of pain, we will do an avoidance behavior. And last week we talked a little bit about doing opposite action. Yeah. And we have to go opposite of our urge to avoid pain and actually step into it and stand in it. Um, because it, it, there's stepping into the pain will actually help us get free. Um, a lot of our reoccurring and compulsive behaviors really serve as self-medicators. They're a soothing way for us to, to get a bit of, little bit of relief. And I would encourage you, if you notice that you're struggling with something reoccurring in your life, it's getting in the way of relationships, family, connection, I want you to ask yourself, what is the real pain? What is the real source? Um, because until we figure that out and we stand in it, we step into it and do the work, we're going to continue to struggle. And what we know is that some of us aren't real sure where the pain is or what it is. The origin story is a, a long time ago. So we, we might notice we open the refrigerator, but we don't really know why. Um, and so we might need the help of a therapist or a good friend or celebrate recovery, talking to someone who's walked in our shoes to help us get to the source of pain. And we know the, the research around 12-step programming is really good. So whether it's Overeaters Anonymous or AA or CR, um, get some support, get some help. Some of us need a higher level of care. Um, so in addition to CR, we need to get into some therapy. Um, there's another, uh, it's called an intensive outpatient program, an IOP, and it's three days a week for three hours. And if you're struggling with significant addiction, it can be really useful. And then some of us really do need to look at the value of rehab. The good news is our brains will heal, and the, the way they heal the best is with a period of significant abstinence. And some of us just cannot do that on our own. Um, so whatever you do, my biggest message to you today is to don't, don't do it alone. Um, let other people see you and help you and be part of your recovery story, because the brain can heal. Right. Um, God's kind and gracious to us that way. And... Um, and it's important, the process of recovery is good and important. I just want to encourage you to take a step today. And maybe the first step is just acknowledging that I, I do have a problem. Yeah, and to, and to just to piggyback on that a little bit, to know that you're loved. That verse I share from Romans, that we're more than conquerors through what? Through love. And in your experience, this is what I'm so thankful for is that you're a member here and attend Rivers Crossing, that you, you bring balance to this topic and that you are passionate about Jesus in your, you know, let's, let's remove, let's keep the clinical hat on, but put on the hat of a believer. What have you seen in the recovery process for people who are followers of Jesus? Yeah, I would say in my 20 years of doing this work, it's a, it's a big difference watching a believer walk through recovery, not because they do it perfectly, but because there's a source of hope. Um, because when they fail and they slip and they relapse, they can get their identity right. Yeah. And their identity is uh, in Jesus. And scripture says in Romans 8, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. And there's so much about addiction that bring heap shame and condemnation. And when you can get your identity right, when you can see yourself the way Jesus sees you, it can set you free to do the work of recovery. So good. So good. Let's thank uh, Dr. Dowdy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask that, uh, that we really honor the next couple of minutes, that if at all possible you're not leaving, moving. Uh, if you're driving, you may even want to pull over on the side of the road for this moment because I believe God wants to meet us here. Some of you who've, who've been attending have noticed this trailer we've done uh, for this series. And uh, when it first got sent to me to, to check out and to approve, I, I had no idea who uh, Daniel Kibler was. And he's the actor. And I thought, did we hire this out? I, I haven't met Daniel yet. I did such a fantastic job just portraying that, that feeling of being buried alive. But I, I found Daniel's story. We've been getting so many different stories of people who've been set free from addiction, who've broken free from, from depression and anxiety and shame and trauma, all the things we're talking about. And Daniel's story is so powerful. I'm gonna share just a little piece of it. Daniel, who's in that video, started using drugs at the age of 13. By the time he was 17, he'd started using heroin. And from 17 to 25, he was a heroin addict. 
He was in rehab. He had to take that step to go into rehab. He went to a ministry called Teen Challenge. Some of you may be familiar with Teen Challenge. And he heard about Jesus and, and he knew that he needed a quote unquote higher power. And he went forward in a, in a meeting and, and he, he prayed what I call the magical mystery Jesus prayer, that prayer of salvation, just taking a step in his journey towards, towards believing. And, and I think that he did believe to a certain extent in Jesus at that moment. And shortly after that, he went to a Christmas service where, and I want you to hear this, I shared it with our worship team, our production team this morning, because it's so important that you understand what God can do in a moment to change your life. Yes, recovery for some can be the rest of your life, but what God can do in a moment can change your life forever. He went into the service and he saw people lifting their hands like some of you saw today and were like, what are they doing in here? Like, I don't know what's going on at this church. And, and that's just an act of worship, but it's also an act of surrender. And he just jumped on board. He's like, hey, I just went and prayed this prayer. So this is what Christians do. And he just raised his hands. And, and he said that in that moment, he felt the overwhelming love of God and acceptance of God that he had never felt in his life. And in his words, after using drugs from the age of 13, his entire life, he felt a high that heroin could never bring, that any other drug could never bring. He experienced a tangible release of dopamines, which happens in a moment of worship. He, he experienced God and he said, you know, I, I believed in Jesus, but I didn't really become a believer until that moment. He started a 12-step program, was four years free, delivered when COVID set in. This is his story. I asked permission to share it. Like many people who were working a, a system or plugged into a church, church is closed. Guess what else closed? 12-step programs. And he relapsed. And now he's back and he's a year clean and sober again in that period. Let me finish, hold on. I want you to clap, but just give me one more second. His wife and he entered into counseling because of his addiction and the mistrust and the lying. And then she started coming to church with him at Rivers Crossing Deer Park. She became a follower of Jesus, got saved and baptized. And God is in the middle of their journey battling addiction. God is there and he wants to be there for you. Now let's give God a little bit of praise. Now, that's just one of many stories, but I'm more concerned about your story. And so what we're gonna do is in just a moment, we're gonna bow our heads, close our eyes and pray. And if you were walking through those signs of addiction earlier, if you know that you have an addiction, whatever it is, God is here to meet you in the middle of it. And I wanna pray for you. And if you're here and you haven't yet been born again, I wanna pray for you. If you've not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we're gonna pray for both groups of people. If you're battling an addiction, I'm gonna pray for you. And if you've not yet become a follower of Jesus, I'm gonna pray for you. So every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving, no one leaving. If you're in any of our venues here in Mason, just respect this moment. If you're here today and you're a follower of Jesus, but you're a follower of Jesus who wrestles with some type of addiction, I want you to be honest in this moment. I just want you to lift your hand and say, that's me. There's no shame, there's like, just be honest, just say, hey, I, I, this is my day, I wanna be set free, and I'm just gonna acknowledge that to God. This is not to embarrass you, this is for you to take a step of faith to become victorious, to get a victor mindset instead of a victim mindset, to be set free, to tell the truth. Thank you, 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 thank you. Father, right now, for food addictions, we pray for your deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. For drug addictions, porn addictions, sex addictions, approval addictions, technology addictions, nicotine addictions, alcohol addictions, pill addictions, approval addictions. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you've seen every hand that's gone up I ask for your freedom to come right now in the name of Jesus. Whether that's 
a byproduct of their choice, whether that's a demonic influence right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, you have no authority in this place, in their life. We rebuke you, we stand against you, we submit ourselves to God and we resist the devil so that he would flee from us. I pray for the liberty of Jesus. I pray for the same power that raised him from the grave to bring liberation for the captives, to bring freedom for those who are bound and to break down prison doors and break chains of addiction in Jesus' name. I'm not gonna be long, this is only gonna be just a moment, but I believe the Holy Spirit has been drawing some of you into a relationship this whole day. Maybe it's been weeks, maybe it's been months, maybe it's been years. I sat in church thousands of times hearing a message about Jesus but never had my life transformed until in a moment I surrendered. I confessed Jesus as my Lord. I cried out for God to save me and my life has never been the same. If that's your desire, <laughs> that, that's the most important decision you will ever make. Romans 10, Verse nine says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You need to be saved, you need to be born again. It's a free gift. You have to receive it and open it and believe it. The way you do that is admitting that you're broken and you're sinful, that you've hurt others, you've hurt yourself that you need forgiveness by believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and by choosing, making a choice today, March 6th, 2022, I'm going all in. No more games. Today is my day. If that's your desire, still every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm gonna just lead you in a prayer. It's not my words that make you a Christian, it's your belief in what Jesus Christ did and receiving him into your life and believing in him that make you a follower of Jesus Christ. But if you wanna do that for the first time today, just simply pray with me. Say, God, I need you. Would you please forgive me? I know I've sinned against you. I know I've sinned against people I love. I've sinned against myself. Would you please forgive me? I'm crying out, I'm crying out to you, God, I need you. And today, I just, I just believe, I believe. I believe that you sent your one and only son, that I can believe in him and not perish, but have everlasting, eternal life. So I just confess Jesus as my Lord. Jesus, will you come into my life, transform me from the inside out. I believe you died for me and conquered death, that you are alive and well. And I receive you as my Savior and Lord. If you're still praying right now, I want you to pray one more thing. It's so critical that you pray this. And you can say, Dad. You can say, Father. You can say, Abba. You can say, God. Just say, God, would you fill me with the power <laughs> to be victorious? Would you fill me with your spirit so that I have everything you've desired for me from the foundation of time so I can walk in freedom, experience liberty, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. God, thank you for freedom. Thank you for saving me, and changing my life. If that's you, we ask people to do something really bold when they pray that, not because we care about another number, but we ask you to acknowledge that in a room that's gonna respond with erupting praise and, and applause for you because if you can't take a stand for Jesus in this room, you'll never live for him outside of this room. And Jesus said in, in Mark chapter 10, and Matthew chapter 12, that if you acknowledge me before men, I'll acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. So if you just gave your life to Jesus Christ, just be bold. And on the count of three, just raise your hand and say, today is my day. One, two, three, just raise them up all over this room. If you said yes to Jesus Christ, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's so awesome. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone in the balcony? Is that you? Is, that, is it your day? Just, let, just raise a hand if, if today's your day. If you're online, you can let our online hosts know. There have been so many today who've made that decision for the first time. And so God, we pray that you would seal every decision with the seal of your spirit, with the boldness 
of the lion of the tribe of Judah with the righteousness that's not of our own effort, <laughs> but of your sacrifice on the cross. So God, for new life in Christ, we worship you. For freedom today, we worship you. And God, I pray that as we celebrate new life in Christ, that, that we would experience that same power that Daniel experienced that first time he walked in and raised his hands. That we would feel the power of your presence and your Holy Spirit as we worship you. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Can we give it up for new life in Christ here today, amen. So good. And then uh, I'm gonna invite you to worship, to stand together. If it's your first time, you just made that decision. You are, you are entering into the presence of God as a forgiven son or daughter of the Most High King. If you're a follower of Jesus, this is our opportunity to, to give him honor and praise for what he's doing here. So let's stand together and let's worship. yes to Jesus, we want to help you get started on your journey. Stop by our Welcome Center, pick up this new Believer's Kit. I think you'll find it a very useful tool to help get you started. 
uh, we want you to partner with us. Uh, God is doing some great things here at this church, and we couldn't do what we do without your generosity. So if you want to partner with us, there's uh, three ways you can give online, the app, and in person. And finally, I want to leave you with two challenges. Not suggestions, but challenges. Some of you need to take a step today, and you need to go out and stop by the tent on the way out and meet some of our Celebrate Recovery leaders. If you know someone who is struggling with an addiction or a hurt, a habit, a uh, hang up, uh, we have the place for you. And hundreds of people gather here on Friday nights for our Celebrate Recovery ministry. It's one of the largest in this area and uh, God is doing a great work in it and we want you to be a part of it. Also, um, as you're leaving, uh, we're gonna have our prayer team down front here. If you're in the chapel, we're have, we have our prayer team for you as well and in the lobby. Uh, so you can stop by our prayer um, room and get prayer. And, and some of you, you know, hands were raised all over this room. When Pastor Paul said, raise your hand if you need help in this area. So we know that you need help in this area. And so some of you need to take a very bold step today. I know it's scared or it can be scary, but some of you need to take a bold step and come forward for prayer. That's what we're here for to stand together, to walk with you. So if you need that, come on the outside aisles here. You can even go ahead and start making your way down. Our partners are here. They're ready to pray with you. Uh, everyone else, if you wouldn't mind going through the center aisle to be dismissed, that would be awesome. Guys, go enjoy this beautiful day that God has blessed us with, and we'll see you here next Sunday. God bless you.